Daniel and I am from the Bromley congregation. Uh, today we are looking at Genesis 39 for our devotional. Now up until this point we've had Joseph, he's been betrayed by his brothers and uh, been sold into slavery and now he is at Potiphar's household. Now he's working for Potiphar, he's doing really really well, he ends up being one of the heads of the household making sure they're running the day-to-day -day things. Now at Genesis chapter 39, uh, Potiphar's wife ends up trying to sleep with Joseph and obviously uh, Joseph being a good moral character and, um, and honouring God through his actions uh, has no part to play in this and he tries to run away from Potiphar's wife. In the process Potiphar's wife managed to grab a piece of his cloak um, and ends up going to her husband and saying look Joseph has tried to sleep with me. Obviously her husband Potiphar um, is not happy with this and ends up getting Joseph to leave the house and arrested and put into prison. And um, through reading this chapter and I'm reading uh, some of Phil Moore's book, um, I've come to realise something that I haven't really focused on before or realised in my daily life as well. Um, and Phil Moore says one of the most important things when we are trying to preach the gospel and preach the good news is one, the way we say it and obviously um, what we say about the good news and how we um, talk to people about it but also one of the most important parts is how we live it in our daily lives and it's easy to think oh I need to I preach the, God, the good news I need to um, say it in a certain way that is going to reach this person that I'm trying to talk to um, but it's also about how we live it and when I was thinking about this it reminded me from when I was in sick form and I had a group of friends and obviously in sick form, um, you're a, a new Christian and you've, I think I've just been baptised a couple of years before and I was like, oh, I want all my friends to come to church. I want them all to know the good news of God. And so I was always trying to like, how can I get them to church? I was talking about, oh, my youth group's so good. You can come, come, come along to my youth group. Uh, you should know the thing called the Bible. You should try and read the Bible. Um, but what I tried to do and what my friends uh, obviously noticed over time was... I tried to honour God for everything that I did, whether it be not using bad language, whether it be honouring people rather than um, making fun of them or helping people whenever I could and volunteering. And through over a process of time, it wasn't just suddenly, it wasn't over a month, but it was years of me just being who I was in Christ. They ended up actually wanting to know more um, and coming to church, coming to the youth group and then um, three out of my five friends ended up getting baptised and coming to church and it was it was really nice to see and it was amazing and now thinking about it it wasn't it was wasn't just from what I said but it was also from my actions and you can see that through the story of Joseph through everything that he's been through um, being betrayed by his brothers being obviously in this situation of Potiphar's wife being put into prison there there's so much there's so many things happening to him he could easily justify being angry um, and obviously trying to get revenge through all the people that have done him wrong but in the whole entire process he wanted to honour God he didn't care about his name being dragged through the dirt but he wanted to honour God through every single action that he did and you can see that instantly um, at the end of this chapter he gets put into prison and straight away he ends up being put in charge of basically the prison the running of the, the, running of the daily things and the, to the point where the prison guard just leaves him and says, you know what, you can do your business, I trust you. And that was because of the way Joseph acted, um, because he was honouring God through uh, his actions. And one part that especially I thought was uh, applicable for now is right now through COVID, it can be quite lonely because of lockdown. We feel like we can't see our friends, we can't see our family. And especially when Joseph is in that prison cell, he can't see anyone. He's locked there, he's by himself, and obviously he's got the other inmates and the guards, but he's away from family, he can't see his friends, he's locked there. And in verse 21 it says, the Lord uh, was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favour in the eyes of the prison warden. And so you can find that we are locked away in our homes, we're not allowed out, but God is with us through this entire process. He's never going to leave us. We may feel like we are lonely. We, feel may, we may feel like that we're not with our friends, we're not with our family, but God is right there in the presence of our own homes in the whole entire process. And I just want to encourage everyone with that, that God is there. And so the whole the summary of everything, I wanted to name this um, devotional. I didn't say at the beginning, but I'll say at the end is living the good news. So 
we are speaking it, but how are we living it in our daily lives, whether it's at work or we're at home and doing our Zoom calls or anything like that, how are we living the good news? And so if I have two prayer points, it would be for us as a church, we're able to live out the good news, not just speak it, but live it in our daily lives. Again, work, at home, with our families, with our friends, that people are able to see God through our actions as well as what we say to them. And for anyone who's not a Christian yet, who hasn't discovered the love of God or the Bible, I pray that you will end up knowing God's love through this, through this video, through your friends, through your family, who are Christians, who act and show God's love through their actions as well as their words. But also a second prayer point would be that you would realise that you are not alone in this process through this lockdown, through anything in life where you feel like you are by yourself, that God is with you 100% all the way, every day.